Hello, hello, it's Stumplet here. Here's a nice product from Trigonometry. Find cosine pi over 7 times cosine 2 pi over 7 times cosine 3 pi over 7. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Now, the shortest method is probably just to memorize this or try to use your calculator and evaluate this. And if we do that, we're going to get to 1 8th. So just in case this item comes up in like a, uh, an examination or a competition, having, knowing this identity might be nice. But let's try to prove this result. And then let's just say we don't know that it is 1 8th for now. But let's try to use manipulation skills to help us get this value. Now. One thing to note is that pi over 7, 2 pi over 7, 3 pi over 7, uh, they're not special angles at all. So those are not the special angles that we know and love. So we have to do something to it. All right, so first observation we see is that pi, 2 pi over 7, 3 pi over 7, they're obviously multiples of pi. And in these types of questions, we tend to write something or we tend to manipulate it in a nice way. So today, I'll be showing you one solution on proving this is going to be equal to 1 8th. And that method will start by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by sine pi over 7. Now, why do we want to achieve this? Uh, why do we want to do this? It's because of this part. Now, this part, sine pi over 7, co pi, uh, cosine pi over 7, that's kind of similar to the double angle identity. And then why do we want to use the double angle identity? Well, simply because of the 2 pi over 7 here. And then maybe nice things is going to happen. And we're going to proceed with our manipulation this way. All right. So since we have like the observation here that this looks like the double angle identity, we're going to use that here. So um, from the double angle identity, if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to get that sine x cosine x. That's going to be equal to 1 half sine 2x. So the green part over here it's going to be equal to 1 half of sine 2 pi over 7. And then the rest, I just copy it again. And then we can actually observe again that there is another part that looks like the double angle identity. The sine 2 pi over 7, cosine 2 pi over 7. And exactly um, the same thing, we're going to do it again. We're going to use our double angle identity here to make this sine 2 pi over 7, cosine 2 pi over 7. We're going to write it as 1 half sine 4 pi over 7, as you can see here. Now, all right, 4 pi over 7 and 3 pi over 7, not really the same, not the same angle, but we can do some nice manipulation here using the identity. Because like sine x, that's going to be equal to sine pi minus x. You can actually just visualize this, for example, in the, well, since 4 pi over 7 is like between 0 and pi, roughly it's an obtuse angle somewhere here. And then, well, the reflection of it, for example, um, if this angle over here was theta, well, this part here must be uh, theta as well by reflections. But uh, this part, it's going to be 180 minus theta. So again, 180 degrees, that's just pi in radians. That's why we have the identity here. So you can use this uh, representation above, or you can try to expand this using the um, difference identity for sine. Anyways, uh, this sine 4 pi over 7, we can write it as sine 3 pi over 7, thus achieving our goal of making these two the same. Now, once these two are the same, we can apply the identity once again. So the sine 3 pi over 7, cosine 3 pi over 7, we're going to write it as sine, sorry, 1 half sine 6 pi over 7. Now, first of all, the 1 fourth times 1 half, that gives us 1 eighth. And then we know the answer is 1 eighth because I told you guys that beforehand. But what? can we do with this sine 6 pi over 7 and, si and sine pi over 7? Actually, the same identity we have over here. The sine x equals sine pi minus x. Because if you realize, pi over 7 and 6 pi over 7, they're supplementary, they add up to pi. So in fact, uh, these two are the same, so I can just directly cancel them together, uh, cancel them out like that. So since only the 1 8 remains, the final answer is going to be 1 8. And this is going to be like the proof on why cosine pi over 7 times cosine 2 pi over 7 times cosine 3 pi over 7 is going to equal 1 8. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!